Recording in progress. Right, 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 right. right. And welcome, welcome to, to Refresh 2022. 2022. I'm, I'm happy, happy that you have joined, joined us. And even, even as, as we are still in our service tonight, I want to begin with a of prayer. 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 Thank you for, for this, this yet, yet another, another holy holy Sabbath. Sabbath. Yes. 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 We pray, God, as we go forward tonight, that you'll grant us an experience which we have never had before, that, Lord, you'll help us all to know you more, to be closer, drawn to you as a result of this service. We place everything in your hands, dear God, the singers, the preachers, every participant. Lord, that you will be honored, you will be lifted up on high, and your people will be blessed, is my humble prayer. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen, everyone. And if you could begin to account for this tonight with the use of theme number eight, we gather together to ask the Lord to be faithful. So I want to invite you to sing along with me. We gather together to ask the Lord's blessing. He chastens and hastens his will to make known. The wicked oppressed him, now he sees from distressing. Sing praises to his name, he forgets not to do so. Beside us to guide us, O oh Lord, with us join in. Ordain, maintaining his kingdom divine. So from the beginning, the fight we were winning. The Lord was at our side, oh glory be thine. We all do extol thee, thou leader triumphant. And pray that thou still our defender wilt be. Let thy congregation escape tribulation. Thy name be ever praised, O Lord, make us free. Amen. And our next song will be number 422. Marching to Zion, 4.22. Come we that love the Lord, and let our joys be known. Join in the song with sweet accord. Join in a song with sweet accord, and thus Surround the throne and the surround the throne. We're marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion. The beautiful city of God. Let those refuse to sing who never knew a God. But children of the heavenly King, but children of the heavenly King may speak 
Their joys abroad may speak, their joys abroad. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God, the hill of Zion kneels, a thousand sacred streets, before we reach the heavenly fields, before we reach the heavenly fields, or walk the golden streets or walk the golden streets we're marching to zion beautiful beautiful zion we're marching upward to zion the beautiful city of God. Then let our songs abound, and every day be dry. We're marching through Emmanuel's ground. We're marching through Emmanuel's grounds to fair worlds on high to bear our worlds on high we're marching to zion beautiful beautiful zion we're marching upward to zion the beautiful city of God. And amen. And to close, we will sing number 495, Near to the Heart of God. 495. There is a place of quiet rest. Near to the heart of God, a place where sin cannot molest. Near to the heart of God, oh Jesus, blessed Redeemer. Send from the heart of God. Hold us who wait before thee, near to the heart of God. There is a place of comfort sweet. Near to the heart of God, a place where we, your Savior, meet. Near to the heart of God, oh Jesus, blessed Redeemer. Send from the heart of God. Hold us who wait before thee, near to the heart of God. There is a place of full release. Near to the heart of God, a place where all is joy and peace. Near to the heart of God, oh 
Jesus blessed Redeemer sent from the heart of God. Hold us away before thee, near to the heart of God. Amen and amen. We welcome you to Refresh 2022. The Executive Committee of the Ministerial Association is happy you joined us as we worship on the theme grounded in Christ, bonded together, prepared for a mission. Under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, we put together, together programs with relevant creations and a list of nine, nine creatures. All of this was done with you in mind. In 2022, we, in 2020, we were thrust into a mode of proclaiming the, the gospel in a new way. There were many uncertainties, but we pressed forward. And in 2021, for the first time, Refresh was held virtually. And if you were there, I know you will testify it was a blessing. In case you missed it, don't worry. Let us take a look at what happened. Father, we thank you so much for your words to our eyes to see. The preacher is the one that's called to, pre to preach and to proclaim, thus said the Lord. He is the one who addresses the needs of the sinner and he responds to the needs of those who are in danger. You see, tonight we are called to proclaim the word despite the new norm. 
And let me tell you, friends, the new norm is nothing new. Ah, uh, yes, the disciples were called to preach the gospel. They were called to preach the gospel in times when it was not popular, in a time when there was idolatry, when there was paganism, in a time when things seemed to be going south, and they were called to preach the gospel. Ah, uh, yes, the new norm is not new. We move to the dark ages, and we see that there were those who were still faithful, those who still adhered to the principle of godly living. These were the Christians who were hunted down. They were killed. They were thrown into the lion's den. They were burned to the stakes. Yes, they were claimed that the name of Jesus despite the new norm. Elijah didn't need to burn his plowing equipment to follow Elijah. He didn't need to do it because verse 19 indicates that Elijah had already given him his mantle. Elijah had already received the blessing before the burning. Elijah burned his flowering equipment in order to make a strong spiritual statement of response and consecration and gratitude to the fact that he now was being called to a higher purpose. A statement that clearly delineated that he was now committed to God. And oh, listen, Elijah is making a powerful declaration regarding his new found purpose. I want God's best for me. I am no longer satisfied with operating the majority of my contribution to his cause in Monday maintenance ministry. I am willing to do whatever is necessary for God to extract every ounce of glory he can squeeze out of my life. Elijah wasn't just buying in. That would have been a period. Elijah was, wasn't just signing up. That would have been a semicolon. Elijah was saying to the world and to God, I'm selling out. And selling out requires an explanation. Elijah was ready to go all in. All out for all in all. Paul is writing to the young man Timothy, the young man who wasn't ready to go on that journey. And in writing to him, it is interesting in verse interesting that in verse 11 he says, Whose mouth verse 11 says, Only Luke is with me. This is Paul speaking. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for ministry. Notice that now this young man Timothy is now considered by Paul profitable for ministry. So along the journey, as young preachers, you discover that you may not be considered so profitable in the eyes of some persons, but understand this, be confident, be assured of the fact that it is God who called you to the mission. That is that even if you are criticized, even if some may doubt your calling, even if you are looked on on and feel like giving up, you may get knocked down like this young man, but get up and press forward. Do not retreat here, the preacher. You are profitable for ministry because the one who has called you has placed a special anointing on you. Having reflected on the past, it's now time to step forward into the promising future. On the morning of April 9, Refresh 2022, led by the Ministerial Association, continues under the theme, Grounded in Christ, Bonded Together, Prepared for Mission. Our Divine Service Speaker is Dr. Leonardo Johnson, and that promises to be an insightful message. 
but also throughout the day we will have presentations on relevant themes themes like time management teamwork in ministry raising children while being a pastor divorce and remarriage and our presenters for those themes dr milton gregory dr roy dennis mrs orchid smith pastor carlington hilton it really does promise to be a full day but it also promises to be a filling day there's a time for everything under the sun and for everything there is a season we have worked and now it's time to be refreshed We've come to the time when we're about to hear from the Word, the of, Word God. of God. <laughs> and it's my privilege this evening to introduce to you our poor packed speakers for this evening. Pastor Odiaka Walker was trained and educated as a pastor and teacher. He worked with the Ministry of Education for over 15 years and with East Jamaica Conference of Seventh-day Adventists in the North Street District of Churches. He has worked as Bible worker, literature evangelist and evangelist. He is married to Anne Marie, an early childhood educator, and their union has produced two beautiful daughters, Odia and Britannia. He is a graduate of the Michael University College with an honors diploma in primary teacher education and from the Northern Caribbean University with a Bachelor of Arts in Religion and an Associate of Science in Mathematics. His postgraduate studies took him to the Seventh-day Adventist Theological Seminary, Andrews University, where he obtained the Master of Arts in Religion with concentration in Biblical and Cognate Languages. Pastor Walker is currently a lecturer in the School of Religion and Theology at Northern Caribbean University. His passion is to see individuals in revival, mission, and readiness for Christ's soon return. Our second speaker for this evening is Pastor Kevon Richards. Pastor Kevon Richards is a graduate of the Northern Caribbean University. He is a past president of the Ministerial Association in 2019, and he currently serves as the intern pastor for the Hillshire District of Churches. He is married to Ocean Barton, a high school business teacher, and together they are committed to serving God and playing their part in preparing a people for the second coming of Jesus. And last, but by no means least, Pastor Onyeka Nevins is a graduate of the Northern Caribbean University. He is a past president of the Ministerial Association in 2020, and he currently serves as the intern pastor for the Brownstone District of Churches. Pastor Nevins is married to Jody Ann, a graduate of NCU, and she is a guidance counselor at the Port Maria Preparatory School. My friends, I'm very excited for what God is about to do this evening, and our souls are about to be watered with his powerful word. But just before we listen to the preaching of the word of God, we'll have a special song by Sister Kristen Gordon. Be blessed. <laughs> The room grew still as she made her way to Jesus. She stumbles through the tears that made her blind. She felt such pain. Some spoke in anger, heard folks whisper, there's no place here for her kind. Still on she came through the shame that blessed her face until at last she knelt before his feet. And though she spoke no words, everything she said was heard 
as she poured the love for the master from her box of alabaster and i come to for my praise on him like oil from mary's alabaster box don't be angry if i wash his feet with my tears and i dry them with my hair you were there the night he found me you did not feel what i felt when he wrapped his loving arms around me and you don't know the cost of the oil in my alabaster box. I can't forget the way life used to be. I was a prisoner to the sins that had me bound. And I spent my days pouring my life without measure into a little treasure box I thought I had found. But until the day when Jesus came to me and healed my soul with the wonder of his touch. So now I'm giving back to him all the praise he's worthy of. I've been forgiven, and that's why I love him so much. And I come to pour my praise on him. My oil, my Mary's alabaster box. Don't be angry if I wash his feet with my tears and I dry them with my hair. My hair. You are there. The night Jesus found me. You did not feel what I felt when he wrapped his loving arms around me. And you don't know the cost of the oil. No, you don't know the cost of my prayers. You don't know the cost of the oil. Thank you very much, Christian Gordon, for that wonderful song and that reminder. Beautiful angelic voice that you have used to give God the glory and the praise. Allow me just to also express gratitude to the immediate past president, Raheem Smith, for the elder Raheem Smith for the introduction that you have given all the pastors tonight. And then more formally, let me now proceed with your program outline to say to the Dean of the School of Religion and Theology, Dr. Simon Wambali, and also Ministerial Association President, Elder Roger Williams, also advisor to our sponsor to the Ministerial Association, Pastor Damien Chambers, professors, faculty, students, those watching this refresh 2022 on 
Zoom or on Facebook or on YouTube or whatever platform to whatever modality on behalf of my wife and I, Pastor Richard and his wife, Pastor Odea Walker and his wife. We three men bring you all greeting along with our wives and thank you for inviting us on this memorable and monumental occasion for Refresh 2022. Now, you have sent us and you have asked us to go and visit, speak with God and bring back a word for you. You have asked us to do it hastily also. And I say hastily because you have given us only 10 minutes to slice the word, dice the word and share it in digestible format. And we'll do just that. So we are anticipating on this Sabbath day, you have the appetite ready for the word. Your theme that you have chosen is grounded in Christ bonded together, prepared for mission. And so against that theme, I want us to use as the opening text, Genesis 1 and verse 1. Genesis 1 and verse 1. I know you know this text so well, Jennifer Barton Wilson, Lincoln like it. You may not need to even open your Bible to quote it, but that's all right. If you have to, that's fine also. The physical Bible is here and we have but a limited time. The text says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That's it. I have retained from this text the topic taken from the Hebrew and English. The first word, Bereshit. Bere sheep. Bow your head with me. Heavenly Father, as we look at your words now, I ask in a very special way that you be seen and be glorified to all the speakers tonight. We will be grounded in Christ, bonded together, and prepared for mission in the end. I pray these things in your son's most holy name. Amen. Our text is the opening line of the entire biblical story, the entire biblical narrative. Whereas it would have been great for me to give you an expository sermon that originated from Hebrew exegetical analysis of Genesis 1 and verse 1, 10 minutes would not allow me to take that plane off and land it without casualties. But hear me now. On the other hand, I suggest to you that equally satisfying for just 10 minutes is seeing how your theme unfolds, especially the first, first portion of your theme unfolds from the level of biblical theology. So with that said, every story has a beginning, middle, and an end. I will give you the beginning, and my other speakers will give you the middle and the end in the context on, yeah. of your theme. And so, so the uh, text, the text, the text says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Bereshit bara Elohim et hashamahim ve'et ha'ares. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I'm about to get moving. I'm about to give you your first slides. I'm going to say it one more time. Put it where you can reach it. Bereshit bara Elohim. In the beginning, God created. He simply expressed his will and it happened. Progressive Revelation tells us that in John 1, 1 to 3, more about how this happened or took place. You see, in the beginning was the word, in arche en o logos, the logos. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Guess what? He was in the beginning with God. All things are made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life. I did say, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. 
we further read down in a few verses in John, the Bible tells us the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. You see, God through John wanted those in the immediate context of the text to understand that Jesus is the word. But he also wanted you and I who are removed from the immediate context to also understand that Jesus is the word, the logos, the outward expression of all that God is. I'm heading somewhere. Bereshit bara Elohim. In the beginning, God created. This is not a figure of speech. It is a matter of fact. Am I speaking to someone? God, therefore, Bereshit is ground zero. I did say that God is ground zero. I hope you have digested that. I'm about to give you the second slice. Here goes. Et hasharim vehet a aretz. Let me say it again. The heavens and the earth. That's just a nice way of saying everything. Similar to saying, I look high and low and I ain't find nobody. This simple merism is a simple way of saying I've looked everywhere. Therefore, when the text says the heavens and the earth, it is saying the entire cosmos. I'm going to put it where you can reach it a bit closer. Progressive revelation further tells us in Colossians 15 to 16 that Jesus is the image of the invisible God. And the text continues to say, for by him, I did say for by him. Did you hear that? For by him, all things were made or created that are in heaven and that are on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. Beret shit bara Elohim et hashmaim vehet. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The preacher is not speaking in tongues. It's a known language. Jesus, I'm putting it there, was the agent of creation. The workman bringing about God's creative plans. So hear me now. Since everything was created, not only through him, but also for him, it means that everything exists, exists for Jesus. I think you're getting what I'm saying right now. The heavens exist for Jesus. Lincoln Lichen, the earth exists for Jesus. Raheem, the things that fill the heavens exist for Jesus. Roger Williams, the things that fill the earth exist for Jesus. Jody and Nevins, the things called forth in the heavens exist for Jesus. The things called forth from the earth exist for Jesus. And since in no doubt Jesus knelt and designed me from the dirt of the earth in the image of God, then I too exist for Jesus. I thought you would get it when I said it like that. So I'm saying to you that nothing in the universe was created or exists for its own sake. Are you with me? But rather to make the glory of God more fully known. I'm simply saying that your very existence is grounded in Jesus, God's agent of creation. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, thus identifies your origin and your purpose. I'm saying to you, your very existence is grounded in Jesus, God's agent of creation. Is somebody following me? You and I are rooted in Jesus. But progressive revelation further tells me in a very important text. And that text is 2 Timothy 1 and verse 9. I did say 2 Timothy 1 and verse 9. And 2 Timothy 1 and verse 9 tells us that God has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works but according to his own purpose and grace, but which was given to us in Jesus 
before I say the last part, I want to get this one more time. God has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Jesus Christ before time began. Uh, I thought somebody catch that. Before time began. I did say before time began. Before Bereshit, there was Jesus, the center of God's plan. Therefore, when my kind got infected with the disease of sin, sending Jesus to fix our problem was neither God's plan C nor plan B. It was God's plan A before there was Bereshit. Are you feeling me? From eternity past, Jesus has been the center of God's plan. And into eternity future, Jesus and the cross will still be the center of God's plan. Is somebody following with me here? I did say, Bereshit, I am happy that God had a plan and how he was building this world. I'm going to say it one more time. I am indeed happy that God had a plan and how he is building this world. But even better than that plan, I am happy that he had a plan and how he was going to redeem this world should something go wrong. And boy, did something go wrong. But I'm happy to let you know that Jesus is the center of that plan. I searched high and low, and I still couldn't find nobody to help me with my issues. When the pandemic put my plans on pause, God's plan for me never went on pause. It still went on. When God has me wrapped up in his plan, I am happy for that. What's left for me to do but to be grounded in the Savior's plan? Let me hasten to a safe landing so you can catch your connecting flight heading to unity. The pilot by the second speaker. Hear me now. Herbert Spencer was a non-Christian scientist about 190 years ago. According to the scientific community, Spencer's greatest accomplishment or achievement was discovering the categories of the knowables. That is, Everything that you observe and see, Spencer found that those things could be placed into five categories. And just by that discovery, Spencer was known and recognized in a very intriguing way, a notable scientist, because everything in life, Spencer says, fits into five categories. When you look in your kitchen, when you look in your bedroom, when you look outside, everything in life fits into five categories. And the categories that Spencer became scientifically famous for identifying are time, force, action, space, and matter. Hear me now. Thousands of years before Spencer's apparent scholarly discovery, my Bible tells me that better shit in the beginning, that's time. Elohim, God, that's force. Bara, created, that's action. Et Hashamayim, the heavens, that's space. Et Ha-Aretes, the earth, that's matter. Everything that Spencer discovered, the very first verse in the Bible tells me that God had that in mind because Jesus had a plan. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth is not just about your origins, but also about your purpose. And from which we derive unity and mission that is grounded in Christ Jesus our Lord. Bereshit bara Elohim. In the beginning, my God created. That's enough for me to get happy. That's enough for you to get excited because in Bereshit bara Elohim, I am grounded in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I hope you can still catch your connecting flight. Amen, amen, amen. What a word to our hearts, Pastor Nevins, as you set the foundation 
for the sermon today. And I'm excited that you set it well because Bereshit Bara starts us off. It shows that Christ is our creator, but it also reveals, as you have shown, that he is our redeemer. And we know that Christ did a mighty work in fulfilling the mission of God. We know that when God created, he created with purpose. And because of that incident, if you may, in the Garden of Eden, that caused God's flight to go down. I'm glad that God instituted the plan of salvation. And you ask me, then what was the success of Jesus's mission? What caused him to be successful in carrying out the plans of God, even though sin intervened? I say, beloved friends, it's because he was bonded to his father. Pastor Nevin said it right that Jesus Christ uh, is not a new day phenomenon. Uh, Jesus Christ does not exist only in the New Testament, but the same uh, word that was with him in the beginning uh, is the same word that Mary met and poured out her alabaster. You're not with a preacher. I said the same one uh, who worked with God to create uh, is the same one who stretched upon Calvary's cross uh, so that you and I can be here today and know ministerial students know that that every time you put on your black suit, uh, it's a reminder that Jesus died. Uh, but when you hold on to your red tire, it's a reminder that he has bonded us together. He has bind us with his grace, uh, with his mercy into the fellowship of God. So we are transitioning on the connected flight uh, to dealing with the portion of our theme, uh, bonded together. No, no. Pastor Nevins, you did well in drawing on the Hebrew. No, I'm just going to work with the English over here. I'm just going to work with the English because, you see, when I look at bonded together, I know words are very powerful. And so I spent a little time to look at uh, uh, President Roger at what this word translates because we're not only interested in the denotation, the dictionary meaning, but we want to hear the connotation. What then, just as Bereshit Bara, is more than the fact that God just created, because the scholars will tell you, Pastor Nevins, that you shared, that, that Bara to create is only used with Elohim, which is the same the connotation or send the strong message that only God is creator. Therefore, uh, uh, President Roger, I know when you put this thing together, you don't want us to just look uh, 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 haphazardly at words, uh, but you want us to dig deep uh, and see what is there. In. When I look at the word bonded, it means uh, to join securely to another by the use of an adhesive, whether it is heat our pressure have mercy. I know that the Greek and the Hebrew pastor Nevins uh, would have caused us to bond together so that we can leave NCU. Uh, I know when the Hebrew is knocking your brain, uh, you're going to bond together with those who have a little bit more uh, so that you can go through. Uh, so you see the pressure, Pastor Clark, uh, of the Hebrew and Greek uh, has bonded us together, has joined us securely so that we can work together for the stuff of the group. It also applies to our ministry. You see, pastoral ministry is not a lonely place. And I say it in the context that you cannot succeed in ministry by yourself. I am sharing with you, my fellow SRT students, uh, there is no room in pastoral ministry for superstardom. Uh, if you try to do it on your own like Peter, then Satan will pitch you over. But I'm glad that your decision uh, is that you want to be firmly joined uh, together. I also look at the word together. And at first I thought it was redundant because they carry the same denotation, if you may. But I know, I know, the SRT students that they, 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 they know better than that. So I could not work with that idea. I worked with the fact that you wanted to stress 